Good morning. Uh-oh, we got a little tear. Oh, oh. <laughs> good morning, everybody. You can clearly see that we are back and in living color today. Um, I'm Chisa Penix Brown, and we're back with Chisa's Corona content. We have had to adjust the schedule drastically because of um all of the goodness that has been coming in where I've been able to teach people online how to start, grow, and maintain their businesses. And so last week we had a bunch of classes that um, overlapped with our normal time as far from 11 till whenever time that we do Chisa's Corona content. So I did miss a couple of days, but just know that the days that I missed, we were definitely working. And I want to thank everybody who actually came out to the online classes that we had last week. Um, and just let you know, of course, we still have some this week. So if you want to join us today, we are going to be doing building a marketing plan for social media. And so that is going to be at 12 o'clock. The link is right there down inside of the comments for this particular post. So feel free to go ahead and register now because you have until probably like about I don't know, 20, 30 minutes to go ahead and register so that this way you'll be on. Um, good morning, everybody. Good morning. So I just wanted to let you know that in case you're ready to jump on today, we can get you some education in there today. Yeah, this is like a kind of a, a deep turquoisey emerald kind of thing going on. And, um, you know, I feel like, you know what I feel like? I feel like an anime character. Not anime, like <laughs> sing the song like I told you to anime, like anime, like A-N-I-M-E, like, you know, the little cute little Asian chibi characters, those anime characters. That's kind of what I feel like with this hair. But I think that one of the things that you should take into consideration with this whole thing of COVID and everything that's happening is do something that makes you happy. And I felt like I wanted to change this hair color. It made me happy. Um, and so that's what we're doing out here in these streets, literally. So that's for today. Um, we do have workshops that are going on the rest of the week. I have websites made easy tomorrow. Um, we're going to do Amplify Your Facebook on Wednesday, Financing Your Business Wednesday night, Automating Your Social Media on Thursday, and then Creating Digital Products. Um, that's going to be on Thursday also. So you have plenty of things to be able to come to this weekend or excuse me, this week to increase your business acumen. And so I'll be going ahead and putting out the list for the whole entire week. But if you just go to ladybusiness.com forward slash links, you will see all of those things there and you can click it. You can register for whatever you're interested in because um, they're all up on the site. And um, if you go to our Facebook page, they're all up there as well at Lady Business. So um, make sure that you register. And if you're not able to attend the class, please share it. Like, I mean, that's the least you could do because there may be somebody out there who needs that information. And your share can be the thing that lets people understand that there's something going on that they need to be a part of. All right. So now let's move into the next thing, which is to protest or not to protest. Now, I'm going to be honest. You know, I told y'all I was not going in these streets to protest. However, what happened was this weekend, Fab Ellis, and I want to thank Ashley. Um, Ashley Carter is her real name, but Fab Ellis, she was putting on an event that was um, really trying to be in support of Black Lives Matter. So she was doing it at um, Vintage and Vogue or Vogue and Vintage. I'm not sure, but that's one of those is the name of the store that's downtown Greensboro um, to basically kind of support that business, but then also to bring awareness to Black Lives Matter. So she was doing a photo shoot. So of course, you know, the girl was like, let's go to a photo shoot. So she said, you could bring your friends and your family, which is what I did. So um, of course, my real glow getters, Shamika and Sierra, and then um, Black Rain NC and then Mr. Brown. So we were out there being black, having lives that mattered. So, um, of course, we were just like, well, we're not just going to do that. We're going to go ahead and take our own photos. And what happened was it was so much art going up the street that it was like, OK, well, let's keep stopping and let's talk. So at basically each individual um, piece of art. And I need you to understand what I'm saying, piece of art. The reason that there are even pieces of art in the first place is because some people thought that it was a good idea to tear up downtown Greensboro. So by them doing that, what happened was people put up gigantic big boards of wood to cover their storefronts so that people wouldn't break out their glass. So in, in, um, in reaction to this, what happened was artists are coming out and they're actually painting these pieces of wood to basically make their own political statement, to make their own community statement, to let you understand that there is something beautiful that can come from something terrible. Because, you know, oftentimes most of these protests started peaceful and then somebody, in quotations, felt like they wanted to just tear some shit up. OK, that's just basically what it was, because can you protest without tearing some shit up? Yes. But. Some people wanted to do that. So I understand as a business owner, a lot of people either close or they just cover their doors. Now, as a result of that, then the artist community came out, they're painting things. So along the way, we just kept stopping and taking pictures in front of the things that really resonated with us. 
Now, along the way, I also saw a whole bunch of people that we knew, right? So this was like having a little family reunion out on the street, black, white, gay, straight. I mean, every, everything that you know, I knew people from all different walks of life. And I'm just like, hey girl, hey dude, you know, like, and you're talking. And as we keep progressing up the street and all we were doing was taking pictures originally, everybody's like, are you going to the protest? Are you going to the protest? Are you going to the protest? And I kept saying, no, we're not going to the protest. We're not going to the protest. <laughs> then I came across somebody, one of my mentees from back in the day, and she was just like, oh my God, it's been so long since I saw you. Are you going to the protest? And we just kept getting closer and closer. So I was like, you know what? Yes. Finally, I'm going to the protest. Now I need you to understand this is a span of an hour, right? With seeing people and people keep asking. And then I was like, okay, yeah, you know what? We're going to walk up to the protest. Let's go. So we get to the protest, okay? And I didn't personally feel like I was there to protest. Let me let me be understandable. I was there more to kind of observe and see what was going on. So I didn't take like any, I don't think I did. No, I didn't take any pictures or I didn't do any video like at the protest. Um, and maybe that's just me feeling like a little bit of hypocritical. And let me not, that's not true. I did take some pictures. I just didn't post them. That's not true. I did take some pictures so you could kind of see the crowd. I just, Chisa didn't take any pictures of Chisa out there. Because I didn't feel like that's what I wanted to do. I mean, just showing solidarity and then just showing how many people were out there, all the different races, the signs, all of that. I think that that's impactful. And that's also something that's more of a historical reference for us, right? So I took those kind of pictures. But I didn't necessarily want to take a protest picture, if that makes sense. Because I'm just thinking to myself, like, I wonder how many of those people out there were really registered to vote. How many of people out there... If this wasn't happening, whatever come out and all be together. So I understand that there are certain things that happen that then pull people together. But I wonder why race is always one of those things. I wonder why we don't get together and gather as much. And you know, like even when you start to see like some of the people that were out there, as we were on this trek, this journey to get toward the protest, we had a plethora of white people. And I'm just going to say it just blunt that came up to my husband and Shamika's husband. And they were just consistently saying they were sorry. And I mean, it was one of those things where I was kind of like a little bit taken aback and they were just like, they're sorry. So now mind you, they weren't saying anything like that to us, right? They're like, oh, you're going to the protest, Black Lives Matter, right? But to the two black men that were with us, they, and I'm saying they, this was more than one person, but just continued to say that they were sorry. To me, that was something that was like really powerful, but I think that when you see things like this, and we're tired of seeing it, let's be clear. But when you see things like this, I think people can actually identify. So mind you, now we in all black, dress black, being black, 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 okay? Black, 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 and black. So it was no mistaking that we were black people doing black things on the way to this Black Lives Matter on the, on the way to the protest, like it was no mistake in that. Right. And it was just really interesting to see, um, how people just communicated with our black men. I was, I, I thought that was really interesting. And I mean, it's not a bad thing. All right. So, um, yeah, so we get there and I'm looking and you can't see whoever's speaking in the front because there's so many people out there. But let me tell you what I know about Greensboro. There were a lot of people out there that were giving out water that were giving out snacks. There were organizations that were set up closer to the or um, to the protests that um, were more, I guess, social justice organizations. But they looked so haphazard, like it just looked thrown together. And I'm not trying to say that this needed to be a big extravaganza, but it was like if you didn't go up to the tent you would never have known what was going on in the tent. It kind of looked family reunion-ish. Like we're just all up underneath this tent because we all are thinking about the same thing. So you would have had to make an extra effort to know what was happening at each tent. Now, there were people out there asking you to register to vote and everything. And I understand that sometimes when you do these things, if it's kind of last minute that... um 
that you are not as, as organized, I guess. But I'm just thinking, had I wanted to have a tent, had I said, let's go do something like this, you know, I would have wanted it to, I would have wanted you to know what I was there for, that it would be clear what my organization stood for when you came to the tent. So as far as that, I would just say, if you are going to be an organization that's going to go out and that you are going to organize, can you have some signage? I mean, you could have you could have made a sign, but that lets us know what you're about so that this way we feel like we want to be a part of it. You know, can you have something that you can hand out to us and give to us? Because let's be clear, nobody wants to write on your list with their email. Um, it's COVID. Like it was stuff like that where people were doing things that were acting like COVID's not still going on. No, I don't want to touch your one pen that's been in your one hand that's been outside for all of these hours, but that has also transferred between how many other people. It's like sometimes people are not even thinking about what's happening because this whole thing came up. All of a sudden, y'all forgot that it was COVID. Plenty of people out there without masks on, okay? The, I, I felt overwhelmed physically because it was hot. Um, now I had my water and I had my mask on, but after having your mask on and being around so many people and especially not being around as many people in the last two, three months, it was just overwhelming for me physically. And I was just like, no, we have to keep moving. I can't keep standing in one place around all of these people. You got people with their kids out, dogs, um, old people, young people. So the visual of it was good, but when you really get down and you start to have that microscopic view of some of the things that were happening, no, it's still COVID out here. Like y'all forgot it. Y'all thought this was a nice summer day and it was just beautiful. And let's just go enjoy the art. Let's go walk. Let's protest. Don't forget that it's still COVID out here. So, you know, in trying to keep your distance and in trying to empower people, there are things that I think that you could do that could possibly reduce some of the risk. I mean, because you asking for me to sign up on an email with one dirty pen, no, I'm not doing that. No, sir. No, bro. No, sis. None of that's happening. People just need to be cognizant of what's happening now. And they cannot forget that COVID is still real. Whether it's man-made, which is what I think it is, or whether it's something that's supposedly naturally occurring, either way is still happening. So you cannot operate in a sense that you don't, that you don't, understand that this is still a part of what's happening with us, right? So those are some things that I want to say. Anybody that's organized, and I just want you to be conscious of that because, you know, you can give a person an application. You can give a person a link to click. You know, you can give a person a QR code to scan. Like there are so many ways to do these things, right? So I don't know. I feel like I need to do a whole webinar on organizing and I definitely am going to do that. Like it's, it's, a, it's not even a question. But let me tell you this. What it did was it inspired me to say, I need to be a little bit more vocal because I try to keep any politics stuff out. I just say the things that make sense. And I need you to understand something. I am not advocating for a person to be a Republican, a Democrat, a Green Party, an Independent, a, a Pink Party, Purple Party, LGBT. Party. I'm not advocating for anybody to be any party. But I am advocating for you to um, understand what's going on in your own community. Vote at your own elections that are your local elections, your local, your regional, and your state elections. I am telling you, if you're not registered to vote, get registered to vote. And I want to tell you that if you don't know, November 3rd is when we vote. And so I put out a post this morning that's basically just letting you know that, you know, even if you voted for, and I don't like to say his name, I'm going to call him Voldemort, right? Even if you voted for him, okay, the person that's currently our president right now, let me just say it, if you voted for Trump, I'm not mad at you if you voted for Trump, okay? You know why? Because you felt like that was the right choice for you to make at that point in time, regardless, okay? I, I'm not going to judge your choice because, you know, I do be judged duty out here sometimes. I'm not going to judge your choice, but I am saying now that you made the choice and you see everything, because the thing is you could have made a choice and said, you know what, let's just see what's going to happen, right? But now that you've seen what's happened, can you tell me in good conscience that this is the person that should still be running your country? Okay, Kofifi. Should Kofifi be running the country right now? <laughs> should the person that continuously is um, degrading women, degrading anybody that's in any form of the LGBT community, degrading immigrants, the DACA people? I mean, when you start to think of everything that's been degraded, 
um, disrespected. You, you should not be able to tell me that you in good conscience can still vote for a person that does things like that. And just understand that this person is representing everybody in the United States, whether you feel this way or not. So there's not a, there's not a perfect answer. That's what I really want to say. It's not a perfect answer, but is there a better answer? Yes, there is a better answer. And I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. You vote for whoever you want to. But I am saying if you if you rock with me like for real, you should really mm, do what you want to do. Okay, let's just say that. But um, voting for Trump again seems like complete lunacy to me. It just does. And so I decided that with my platform, I'm going to be vocal. I am not going to be like, oh, Trump, Trump every day. That's not my life because that's not that's not the main thing of what we need to do. But I am going to say vote. I am going to say help other people get registered to vote. I am going to say pay attention to your city council and what's going on around you. Okay. Those things are the things that I'm going to say. And those things are the things that make a difference to us on a local level. Because let me tell you something. If you're sitting here watching me on average, you're probably not a millionaire. <laughs> And you might be a millionaire, but I'm just trying to say, and I'm not saying any knock toward me. So let's let's be clear with that. But you got millionaire shit to do instead of watching me on Instagram. I mean, if that makes sense, right? So I'm I'm just, and even if you are a millionaire, you still don't have as much money as Elon Musk. You still don't have as much money as um Bill Gates. You still don't have that kind of money. So you could be a millionaire, and you know what? Let me rephrase that. You could be a millionaire and still sitting here listening to me because you don't have no billions. You don't have no Bs, right? And if you just a millionaire, one, then that means you've already starting to lose some of your stock because you got to keep making every day to continue to stay a millionaire, right? So when you look at this, if you are multi-millionaire, okay, then that's probably where it's a little bit different, because you could be a millionaire and be right here on here, but I'm just, I just want you to just think, we are at a, a time where you're going to have to make a choice, and what I would love for my people to do is to make the choice early on that we're just going to help other people get educated and vote, and we're going to help keep our businesses together, and we're going to support people in our own community, and and I need you to understand something. I'm not just saying just support black people because I support my black people, you know, 10 toes down. Small business is still important, even if it's not a black owned business. OK, black business for me is more important than just small business. So I just want to make that clear distinction. Small business overall is super important to me. Black owned small business is important to me. Women-owned business is more important to me. So when I look at that, you know, and I, I try to say the trifecta. So what are the three things? If you a black-owned, woman-owned, small business, oh, I'm, 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 I'm there for you all day, right? As long as you're not on no foolishness. But I'm just saying that all of our businesses, when we're small, when we're all trying to make it, are important. And I do think that there does need to be a specific push to help black owned businesses. Now, the reason why is because we're still disenfranchised. The same reason why women owned businesses don't get as much money as white, Latina, everything. We still make less. So no matter what, when you pull this down and you look at the disparities that we have, even though I'm saying, yes, small business in general, everybody is important to me. Women owned business, everybody's important to me. Black owned business, everybody's important to me. But specifically, black owned woman owned business we keep opening up businesses but i need you to understand something the average black owned woman owned business is making around twenty four thousand dollars a year who's living off of that who's living off of that so do you see like when we start to talk about it and people say all lives matter i'm just looking at all businesses matter but all black owned woman owned businesses matter even more to me right and you know people have to break down the layers but i think what happens is people don't explain to you why they say what they say it sounds good to just put an acronym up it sounds good to just put a hashtag up do the numbers and break it down and see where we stand and we continue to make businesses specifically black owned woman owned businesses not just because we feel like we want to do something but because it is a necessity for us to be able to have money for us to be able to raise our families for us to be able to have the status that we 
want. It is a necessity. But if our businesses are on average making only $24,000 a year and we can't get access to the capital that we need and we're looked at as a hobby or we're looked at as something that's cute, oh, it's nice. What do you think? We're on the low end of the totem ball. All right? So I just wanted to impart this wisdom to you today so that this way you can understand from here on out where the girl stands. All right? I think that we as a whole entire community have a lot to do, but understand where I'm at. And then let's not even talk about nonprofit organizations because y'all know I'm down 100% for my nonprofit organizations, but I'm also more down for my black owned nonprofit organizations. Why? We as a people overall are disenfranchised lower than most everybody else. It just is what it is. So we're going to be doing some more stuff. How can we, how can we get, more quality out of the things that we do um why don't we partner as much who should we be partnering with what should we do and see some of the things that we should do you know where they all start they all start with money it's not the dream it's not the passion it's not the desire to want to do something or to help somebody it all starts with money because like i've told you before rich people ain't out here worrying about the same stuff we're worried about Mm -mm, they're not because they still live in life. You know what rich people are doing? Waiting for people to get out of those houses so they can go and buy it and they can gentrify some more. Okay. Rich people are waiting for all of the stuff to go on sale so they can buy it and liquidate it and sell it somewhere else. It's so much that I'm telling you, we just have to be vigilant vigilant okay and we have to protect our own businesses so i just wanted to leave you with that just to kick off monday to motivate you so you know where i stand and i'm not, like i said i'm never gonna be like oh my god i'm super political i'm a political analyst no i'm not doing all of that okay but i am saying if a person continues to treat you bad and disrespect you and disrespect your friend and your brother and your sister and your mother and your grandmother how would you treat them? Would you still be like, let me go vote for them? Let me keep messing with you, but you keep treating all of my people bad? No, you wouldn't, right? So you got to look at this thing like if it's real life, because guess what? It's real life. This is really happening right now. And if we continue to be distracted, like I said, it was COVID, then now all of a sudden everybody marching. Now people don't forgot about COVID, like it's not still out here killing people, Okay. It's, everything is important, but then you need to look at the level of priorities that we have because all of this, no matter what, is still a distraction from us to not go vote. We got to make some changes. All right. So if you want to join Jesus Corona content, the group is right there. Check it out in Facebook. It's free. We put information in there every day about the things that are happening. And if you do have a small business where you want to do some share small biz, where we do the marketing for you, which is giving you a podcast episode, a blog post, and social media graphics and a one-page marketing plan, go to ladybusiness.com forward slash share small biz. And then just go ahead. It's $50. And if you want to support a small business by doing that, you can still get them a gift card and then we'll go ahead and we will um, put them on our share small biz list. So we have some new things coming out this week. Um, just check on social media, like the pages, please share the message, put up a watch party for this. If you feel like it, the information was good and it's something that's valuable to you. And um, we are going to have what I'm going to call an action plan. Okay. Because oftentimes what I see with us we got a whole lot of talking, but what are we going to do? So I like to put stuff into action. I'm about that action, boss. So I don't know if you want to be on the action team, if you want to get it in, but we're going to have a 90-day focused action plan for what we're going to do to help our community. So just know that it's coming, okay? It's, it's definitely coming because I think that sometimes people just get led astray. And sometimes you have these leaders that are out here that's just for the money. I just want to do this because we need it, if that makes sense to you. So that's that's coming, okay? It's, it's coming. It's definitely coming. All right. Um, webinar, 12 o'clock today if you are joining. All right. Make sure that you go ahead, click the link and register. And if you're not coming, don't worry about it. We got plenty of stuff throughout the rest of the week. I'll see you back here for Jesus Corona content tomorrow. Yep, because we got time tomorrow. Um, and I will definitely um, talk to you later. So always make sure that you show up and show out and do what? Continue to give it to the people. Bye, guys.